What's up, Pokemon fans? I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and today I'm doing something that uh, I honestly never thought I was gonna do, but uh, you know, it just comes a time sometimes where you gotta make a decision, and uh, that time for me is now. So, a lot of you guys, or most of you guys that are currently watching now, have probably been with us for a very long time. There might be some people here that have only been here for a short time, maybe not know the whole story of the channel and us as a family and everything, but um, we're moving into a new chapter here in our lives, and uh, things are changing. So, you guys may or may not know uh, the story of our house and how back in 2015, we had a massive drain leak that destroyed our kitchen. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold there. I uh, destroyed our kitchen, our dining room, also our bathroom, and uh, that whole area of our house, which is honestly most of our house over there. Um, so we're missing flooring in our dining room. We're missing the lower couple of feet of walls in our kitchen, like the drywall. Uh, we don't have kitchen cabinets. They're being held. Our kitchen countertop is being held up by two by fours. It's been that way since October of 2015. And uh, we're also missing a section of wall in the kitchen, drywall specifically. And uh, also in the bathroom, we're missing a good chunk of drywall about, I don't know, I don't know, about like that, by like that, maybe three or, three or four feet by like two feet high. <coughs> and also we're missing our bathroom vanity, which means we don't have a bathroom sink. Uh, we don't have a vanity or a sink in there. So we've been living like this for, gosh, three, almost three and a half years now. And we've been living in a small house for a long time. You know, it's, it's, it is on the smaller side. It's like 1,300 square feet, something like that, 12, 1,300. And when you take in the fact that all that space is gone, it shrinks down quickly when there's five people living in a house. So I have been trying my best to pay off all of our debt and try to get us out of here. Now, the good news is, is that um, with all the sales I did before, I did manage to pay off that drain field thanks to your guys' help. The sales, the donations, everything. You guys got the drain field paid for. And then on top of that, I was able to put... <coughs> I'm so sorry. I was able to put even more money down and get our credit card debt paid off. So I now qualify to get a mortgage. However, um, I don't have enough money to put down for a house that we actually need. <laughs> so my next thing is to do something I never thought I was going to have to do. And that is another sale video. And this one... This is a big one, guys. This is a really big one. This is stuff that I did not ever plan on parting with in my entire life. But because of the situation and because getting our family into a, a more suitable home and that's not wrecked by damage, and now that we're actually able to, um, it's a whole other ballgame. So I'm looking at having to sell pretty much the rest of everything that I have, except for my complete sets. I, I don't want to get rid of my complete sets, but all of my rarer cards... I've got to sell them and we got to do it because at the end of the day, I want to make sure my family is able to, you know, have a much better living situation than what we've been dealing with for the last few years and get ourselves back on track to a normal life. So first things first, um, I don't have exact prices for most of these cards, but uh, I am going to just say, contact me on <coughs> Twitter at the Pokemon Evos, contact me at um, Instagram at the Pokemon Evolutionaries. Uh, you can also contact me through email, contact at PokemonEvolutionaries.com. Uh, preferably Twitter or email because I actually see those first because I actually get notifications on that. For some reason, Instagram doesn't give notifications for people you don't follow for message requests unless you physically go into the app and see it and check it. So those are my most preferred ways, but if you only have Instagram, message me through there. I will check it as much as possible. I'm gonna start by showing you guys what I have left from the um, PSA cards that I was trying to sell before, because I do still have some stuff left. The majority of this is on the cheaper side, but there are a few cards that are still worth some money here. So I'm gonna start with those and then show you guys the big stuff. By the big stuff, I mean big, big, big stuff. So you guys are gonna get to see not only what I have for sale, but also you'll see the best of my collection because this is all I have left. You're basically gonna be seeing everything I have left to Pokemon because I've sold everything else. <coughs> and um, all I have left for my complete sets. So we're gonna start with this card here. You guys recognize this one. This was in the sale videos before. This is a 2002 Expedition Charizard Reverse, PSA 10. Um, this one is still up for sale. No one's grabbed it yet. I'm kind of surprised. I figured this would be one of the first ones to go, but it's actually one of the last ones left. 
This card I am currently asking for $225 shipped in the United States for. I can tell you the prices on this one and the next card. Uh, most of this stack here I can tell you, but the other stuff I'm not sure about yet. So just what you know what you're looking for, $225 shipped in the US for this one. This one, this is a card that I had on hold for somebody who claimed that they were going to do a deal with me and had me holding on to it for a month, month and a half, and then they stopped talking to me. So I held it for no reason, basically. <laughs> this is a base set Raichu, PSA 10. PSA 10, base set Raichu. This card, um, it's pretty valuable. I mean, I'm looking at probably 150 shipped in the US for this one. That's what I'm going to ask for this one. 150 shipped in the US for a Raichu base set. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm still trying to get over all my sickness. So, uh, next up here, it's a Japanese Lysander Full Art. This is a PSA 10 as well. I'm asking 50 shipped in the US for this one. Via Seeker, same thing, 50 shipped, PSA 9, Emerald Break, first edition, um, first edition also on the Lysander, so this one's also 50 shipped. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? Put those two there. We'll do that, I guess. Yeah, keep them in order. The uh, Dialga's here. This one, oh, it's out of order. That's not supposed to be there. This one is first. Um, this one... This one's 25 shipped in the US for Japanese Hyper Rare Dialga. 25 shipped, PSA 10. The full art one here is uh, 20. So this one's gonna be 20. Um, full art Dialga, Secret Rare in Japan from Ultra Force. So 25 and, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 25 and 20 for those. Uh, 25 also, I'm sorry, 20 on this one as well. All the rest of these are gonna be 20 from here to the point where I say stop. Mega Charizard, PSA 10, 20th anniversary. This is 20 bucks. Charizard, Evolutions, uh, PSA 10, 20 bucks. <laughs> um, we've got probably about 10 or 15 more cards that are 20 bucks here. So next up, we got Sogaleo Prism Star, PSA 10. Uh, Charizard from the Mega Battle, Charizard EX, another PSA 10 for that. Uh, this one, I don't remember. Yeah, this one's, this one's still in the 20. Full Art Looker, PSA 10, 20 bucks. Shining Ray, 9. Also 20 bucks. This is English, of course. Japanese Greninja Break, PSA 10. Also 20 bucks. Lele, PSA 10 from GX Battle Boost. Japanese, of course. Um, English, Shining Arceus, Mint 9 from Shining Legends. Greninja Break, that is going to be a 9 as well from Breakpoint. This is the English one. Full Art, Japanese, Zerkatry from e, uh, GX Battle Boost, PSA 10. Magirna, PSA 10. This is also uh, full art from J uh, Japanese from Cruel Trader. And then we have the Lunala Prism Star Gem Mint 10. So these are all 20 bucks a piece. I figure that's the best way to just price them all out because honestly, they vary a little bit. Some are more, but uh, it's fine. I'm fine with 20 bucks in any of those. Mainly it's these two. 225, 150. So those are the main ones that are left that you guys have already seen. The rest of these cards, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a price right now. Um, I haven't done the research on it. I don't have the time because we are currently uh, getting over being sick. I'm trying to catch up on videos. Um, I've got so much stuff to work on, not to mention the whole house hunting situation. Uh, it's taking a lot of time. So basically from here on out, it's going to be up to you guys. Um, <coughs> I am basically just going to go off of eBay sold listings. So if you guys... Uh, message me, say, hi, hey, I, I'm interested in this card. I can tell you a price. Um, I just don't know offhand what they're all going to be. So I'm just going to kind of gauge it as interest goes. I'm going to start with the ungraded stuff first. Um, that way we get that out of the way. Oh, that's actually a gift from somebody. I can never let that card go. Most of these, though, the rest of these I'm pretty much, yeah, fine with, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I have to be. I just don't want to give up gifts. So we have a Crystal Reverse Kabutops here. This is from Sky Ridge, and this card's in pretty decent shape, if I remember correctly. Um, let's see here. There is a little bit of a marking there, but I don't know if that's actually on the factory side of it or not. Otherwise, this card is pretty much, uh, um, pretty much on the near mint scale, actually. This is in really good shape. I'm surprised. I didn't know that I had crystals that were in that good of shape, but I do, apparently. Crystal Kabutops. So this is going to be probably like in the PSA 8 range, if, you, if it got to be graded. 
uh, in my opinion. So bear that in mind. It's probably going to be around that range. Uh, definitely not lightly played, but definitely not near mint. So right in between. Next up here, we have a hollow crystal golem. This is also from Sky Ridge. The hollows are definitely the more sought after than the reverses, I believe. But uh, they all hold their value regardless. This one looks pretty clean on the front. Oh, yeah, this one's real clean on the back. This one's a really good one, guys. Uh, uh, man, this is near mint. Mint to near mint. Maybe a little bit of edge wear. Yeah, a little bit of edge wear. Still, I would say probably in the, in the nine range, more than likely. So keep that in mind, Crystal Golem. Near mint for sure. Um, next up, let's do this one. Nido King. This is another hollow. This one is from Aquapolis, I believe. I believe this is Aquapolis. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, this card, not too bad. A little rough. Yeah, this has got a corner that's beat up a little bit. This is probably more like around the PSA 6 range, more than likely. So bear that in mind. This is going to be light played for sure, but... It's got to go to, or at least I'm going to try to. And don't get me wrong. I'm not so motivated that I'm just going to give them away because I obviously do need uh, to make sure that they're worth selling. But I'm just kind of feeling it out now, depending, um, you know, what the interest is. Because obviously we're trying to get some money towards getting out of uh, our current house, which we've been trying to do for years now. And we're finally so close, but just don't quite have that money put towards it yet so we're trying our best all right we got a crystal crobat reverse here this one also going to be in the light played category probably a seven seven ish if i had to guess so not too bad but uh another crystal from sky ridge there <laughs> excuse me all right we also have another crystal lugia here this is probably going to be in the 7 to 8 range as well, if I remember correctly. Crystal Lugia. Front looks pretty nice. No damage, no signs of wear really on the front. A little bit of sign of wear on the back. I'm going to say this is probably a solid 8. Um, I, I had a, a PSA 8 Crystal Lugia not too long ago that I sold. Um, and that one went for 300. So I'm probably going to be looking for around the same for this one. Probably going to be right around 300. Pretty close. Uh, maybe a little less because it's ungraded, but uh, that's probably what I'm looking at for this one, just to keep you guys on your toes for that one. Next up, <coughs> this is a big one here, but it's a little bit damaged. I mean, it's not super damaged, but it's damaged. Uh, Charizard, Crystal Charizard. This is a reverse hollow from Sky Ridge. This one's got some, uh, yeah, it's it's got a little bit of a damage up there. This has got a little bit of a crease. It's got a little bit of peeling right there. Um, probably going to be in the PSA 5 range. Maybe a 6 if we're lucky. But probably in the 5 range. Yeah. More than likely. But still, it's a Charizard. It's a Crystal Charizard at that. And that makes it worth quite a bit in and of itself. So, this is still considered on the low end of light played from where I got this card from. Probably going to be a 5 or a 6. More than likely six, but there's that. All right, so on to the Shinings that I own. We've got a Shining Gyarados here. This is um, this is actually pretty good. Uh, this card has a little bit of corner issues up here. Uh, nothing too major, just a little bit of a, a, a mark there. This is probably going to be in the eight range as well. Probably, I would say. Yeah, because there's really nothing else wrong with it other than that little bit of corner wear at the top. So probably a PSA 8 solid card. All the Shinings are super cool anyway. Uh, we have Shining Magikarp here. This one. This one's got a little bit more issues than the other one, I think. This is probably going to be a 7 range. Probably PSA 7, yeah. Shining Magikarp, though. Awesome looking card. Really, really cool. I've had this one for a long, long time. One of the very first Shinings I ever got, as a matter of fact, when I started uh, picking them up a few years ago. First edition, though, Shining Magikarp. This one 
is really cool. I think I got this for a great price back then compared to where it is now. Still a lot, but compared to where it is now, yeah, I think I did pretty well with it. So first edition Shining Magikarp, and this card is in better shape than its non-first edition. This one's probably going to be in the 8 range, actually. This is a solid card. Um, yeah, I don't know if it'll make it into 9. Probably an 8. I'm going to say an 8. Probably an 8. And you guys know I'm pretty good with my PSA guesses. You've seen my PSA grading videos. Yeah, I, I, I know I know what I'm talking about. That's for sure. Shining Kabutops. I have a whole complete Shining set. This is a whole complete Shining set, by the way. Uh, we have Shining Kabutops here. This is a really good one, actually. I forget who I... Did I get this from PokeSoup? I think I got this from PokeSoup. I'm pretty sure I did. This one is probably going to be right around that same low 9, high 8 range. Not much wrong with this one either. Um, not, everything here is probably going to be in the 8 to 9 range. I don't think I have anything that I'd call a 10, but we'll see. This one is a lot more beat up. As you can see, it's got a big chunk missing right there. Um, shiny Knock Towel. I think that's pretty much the biggest issue. It's got some whiting on the back around the edges there. This is this is like a four to five. <laughs> so this is one of the cheaper shinings without a doubt. If you're looking to just pick up a cheap shining, this is gonna be one of the lower ones. Probably more like in the $20 range more than anything. So there's that. And also Shining Tyranitar. Now the rest of the Shinings I have are actually graded and they're graded pretty high. Uh, this card is beat up pretty darn bad. This is like a two to a three. Yeah, it's pretty beat up as you can see around the edges and the creasings and there's a crease in the middle here, right here. There's a crease across the top. There's a crease down here, there's a crease over here. This is probably a PSA 2. <laughs> so this is going to be another one. Um, probably not going to be the most expensive Shining out there. I don't know what T-Tar is currently going for. I only know what Noctowl is going for because I sold one recently. But uh, I have to check into that one. But take that for what it's will. T-Tar and Noctowl are my worst ones by far. All right. Next up, Gold Stars. Got a Torchic. Torchic Gold Star. This one I'm a little upset about because I meant to trade this one to somebody for something and I traded the one that was in much better shape, which I'm very upset about, but it is what it is. This one has some edge wear issues. Uh, you can see the silvering. It's got a little bit of appeal to it right there. And otherwise, I mean, the back is nah, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. This is probably going to be a six or a seven if I were to PSA grade it, but that's just my opinion, just to give you guys an idea of the condition. Next up, we got Trico here. Trico, Gold Star, going to be from Team Rocket Returns. Uh, this one's in the same condition, honestly, as Trico. I'm going to say it's probably a 6 or a 7. It's got the same kind of uh, edge wear... <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of the same edge wear issues, but uh, still a cool card. And nonetheless, even in this shape, these gold stars are just worth so much. But, all right, next up, we got Groudon Gold Star. Groudon Gold Star is in better shape. That's for sure. Uh, no creases, no scratches, uh, very little edge wear. This is probably going to be an 8 or a 9 PSA graded. So, gradable card here for sure. Groudon is not one you see very often. It is one of the more harder to find ones, in my opinion. Next up, we got the Primal Fish. Not really the Primal Fish, but the Larval Fish. Uh, Kyogre Gold Star here goes right alongside of the Groudon Star. This one's in about the same shape from what I can tell up front, but on the back, yeah, it's going to be probably an 8. This is probably an 8 here, guys. Solid card, beautiful, beautiful card. But uh, definitely an 8. It's the only reason I haven't graded a lot of these. Anything that I feel like is not going to get a 9 or a 10, I just kind of never graded. Um, so you guys can feel free to do that if you're interested in the cards. All right. Metagross. Another beautiful card. I had one of these in Japanese that uh, was given to us that we sold recently. So that is pretty cool. We had the uh, English counterpart already. 
This is a pretty card, guys. Ah, oh, man, this is this is a this is a guaranteed eight, borderline nine. Honestly, it's it's really nice. It's really nice. I don't know why I didn't grade that one, but not gonna do it now. So <laughs> eight or a nine, no doubt. Okay, next up we got Reggie Rock. Reggie Rock Gold Star. Um, I believe this is man. Is this Hidden Legends? I feel like this is Hidden Legends, but I can't remember. Um, solid on the front. Don't see any flaws. Beautiful hollow pattern. Mm, this is probably going to be another eight. Another eight, just because it has some edge wear, just some whiting, edge whiting. That's it. No scratches, no scuffs, no creases, just edge whiting. That alone will put it into an eight. Reg Ice, probably close to the same. Let's take a look at the front. No scratches, no blemishes, no anything like that. Nice hollow pattern. Um, yeah, again, edge whiting. Literally just edge whiting. That's the only thing that's wrong with that card. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I wish I could... Wish I could talk without having to cough so much. But yeah, this is another one in the same category. Probably an eight. Maybe a nine, depending. Depending on what kind of grader you get. Charizard Gold Star. Now this one is a big one. Um, it's got a little bit of a crease up here at the top. Just a little crease. Not a major crease, but a little one. But nonetheless, Charizard Gold Star is one of the ones that just... It always goes for a lot. Because it's Charizard. This is probably a PSA 7. That's probably a PSA 7. It's got a little bit of edge whiting. Um, it is a little off center and it does have a crease at the top, so it's a guaranteed six, but probably a seven. That's how I feel about it. So take that for what you will. Gyarados, Gyarados, Gold Star. Um, let's see. Gyarados, Gold Star. Very nice looking front. I uh, got a couple of factory blemishes there, but that's not anything that we did. That's just how the card came. Uh, it's uh, mostly in center, and it's got a little bit of edge where this is probably going to be uh, an 8 or a 9. I'm going to say it's probably going to be an 8, though, just because of the uh, the factory print line that runs that way for some reason for that card. <sighs> Holland Phantoms was just a set that had that problem, and I don't know why, but that's definitely <laughs> at least an 8. <coughs> Next up here, we got Celebi Gold Star. Celebi Gold Star is from Crystal Guardians, I do believe. And this one is in pretty great shape up front. Nice hollow pattern, no scratches, no bluffs, no uh, peeling. A little bit of edge wear down here. A little tiny bit of edge wear here and here. <coughs> this is probably another 8 or a 9 candidate for sure. Centered well, so take that for what you will. Got a couple of more of that of the ungraded variety. This is a Jolteon Gold Star. Jolteon Gold Star is in solid shape for the most part. A little bit of wear at the top there. And some edge wear and some whiting on the back. This is probably going to be... Uh, man, that's a lot of whiting. I'm going to say probably a 7 category. Probably a 7. If you're lucky, maybe an 8, but probably a 7 overall. Vaporeon is the next one, and this is the last one of my ungraded uh, cards. So Vaporeon here, it looks better than Jolteon. It's clean. Uh, it's got a little mark right there, but nothing major. The back is definitely better. This is this is a uh, this is an eight. This is probably a PSA eight, if I had to guess. So there's why I didn't grade them. They didn't get nines. I didn't think they'd get nine, so I didn't grade them. So. That is the last of the ungraded stuff. Now we'll move on to the graded stuff, which is a bit all over the place, actually. Um, I do want to sort this out a little bit so we can uh, do this together right. These are all gold stars. And then those are shinings. That's a shining. Those two are shinings. And these are shinings. Okay. Okay. I think I have everything ready here. So, we'll put that one there. 
these two here. Should have had this a little more in order, but I didn't, so I apologize. Um, those three will go there. And then this one will go here. Okay. All right, so the rest of these are ready to go. We're gonna start off with uh, the more recent shinings that I have. So we're gonna start off with these. All right, so we have a uh, PSA 9 Shining Lugia. This is from the uh, Premium Special Collection kit from uh, the uh, Shining Legends era. We got another Shining Legends card here. This is a Gem Mint 10 Shining Arceus. Shining Mew, PSA 10. Shining Genesect, PSA 10. Shining Celebi, PSA 10. Shining Jirachi, PSA 10. Shining OO. That's from the Elite Trainer Box. PSA 9 and a Shining 10 of the Rayquaza as well. So all of these, the most recent Shinings, they're all available as well. And they are all pretty much a complete set there as well. Now, next up, let's see here. Let's do them in this order. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're gonna start off with Shining Steelix here first. This is a PSA 9 from Neo Destiny. So Shining Steelix PSA 9, very cool looking card. This is uh, what's left over from my complete Shining collection. This is the graded side of things. We got a Shining Mewtwo. This is a PSA 8. I really thought it was gonna get a nine, but it got an eight. Um, again, it's got uh, a little bit more edge wear than I guess I considered it having before. Honestly, I feel like this is probably an eight and a half, but they gave me an eight. Uh, well, well, you know what? Nah, there's a little bit of scratching there. Yeah, it deserves an eight. Okay, never mind. It deserves an 8. PSA 8, Mewtwo, Shiny Mewtwo, Neo Destiny. We got a Shiny Charizard here. This is the infamous one that I had to have regraded. It was graded as a 9, and I said, nope, that is not a PSA 9. No, it is not. I guarantee you, take it back and regrade it because I want it to have the proper grade. I figured 7, got a 7. So there we go. PSA 7, Shining Charizard from Neo Destiny. PSA 10, Shining Raichu, also from Neo Destiny. This is as perfect as it gets for Unlimited. Only way to beat this is first edition, which I do not have. So there you go. 2002, Shining Raichu, Neo Destiny, PSA 10. And finally, out of the Shinings, the very last one is one that I pulled myself out of the 100,000 subscriber special. PSA 10, Shining Celebi, out of the Neo Destiny pack, the only Neo Destiny pack I opened in that video. We got a Shining Celebi out of it, which was insane. And it got a PSA 10. So, solid, very solid. This one has one of the highest sentimental values to me, uh, but all good things must come to an end, right? So, available, all of them. All right, next up. All the gold stars that I have that are currently graded. So we're gonna start off with this one. PSA 6, Registeel. EX Legend Maker. I was wrong about Hidden Legends. It was Legend Maker. I always mix those up. So when I said earlier Hidden Legends, I meant Legend Maker. This got a six. I was really surprised by it. To this day, I'm not sure why it got a six. Because it doesn't look like it deserves a six. The only thing I can think of is it is a little bit off center, but not much. I don't see any scratches. I don't see any creases or, or, or dents or blemishes. I really don't know why this card got a six. Even looking at it now, sorry for the glare, I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. I, I don't know. I don't know why this card got a six, but here we are. Registeel PSA six, feel free to crack it and regrade it because I don't believe it. Next up, Alakazam, EX Crystal Guardians, PSA six. There is something wrong with this card. I do remember somebody telling me, uh, the, the guy I sent it with originally at the time, he told me that he thinks he knows why I got a six, but now I don't know why. I can't remember. Another one that I don't feel like deserved a six, but it got a six anyway. So why did he get a six? I, I I don't know. I thought there was a reason, but now that I'm looking at it again, I gotta tell you, I don't feel like either one of these deserved sixes. So both of these are sixes when they shouldn't be. Feel free to take that for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> regrade them if you like. Now onto the good ones. We got a PSA 9 Entei Gold Star Unseen Forces. So that's pretty cool. I remember when I first got this card, I got it with a set actually. 
that one and this one, which created the nine, Raikou, also Unseen Forces. So these two got nines and the other one got a 10. We'll get to that one in a little bit, but I bought them all as a set. I remember doing that a few years ago. Next up, Flareon, PSA 9. That's uh, from e uh, EX Power Keepers. Really cool looking card. There you go. Now, back to that uh, <laughs> that PSA 10 I was talking about. Suicune, my only PSA 10 Gold Star. The only one that I own that's a PSA 10. This is a very cool card. Can't get any better than a PSA 10, so very, very solid. Uh, this one, very deserving too. It's a beautiful card, great condition. All right, next up we have Latios, PSA 9. Latios Gold Star from EX Deoxys. EX Deoxys, tough, tough set to find, and even harder to find Gold Stars on that set. But here we go, Latios Gold Star right there. Next up, we got Latias. Latias Gold Star, PSA 7. Uh, not quite as good, but still much better than I expected. This card was given to me by somebody at a uh, at a meetup, at a uh, uh, a tournament actually. And this person who gave me this Latias is also responsible for the very last card that we're going to be showing in this. Um, <sighs> sentimental value, don't want to let it go, but if I have to, I have to. You know, got to look out for the family. But uh, yeah, this is a big one for sure. So PSA seven Latias. This next one, <laughs> man, this card to this day, I don't know how I managed to get, I traded, I'll, I'll tell you the story, the kid that traded me this, he only wanted a gold star, or not a gold star, a secret rare ultra ball, only one, and I said, man, I can't do it, it's, it's not enough, it's not enough, take a full play set, so four secret rare ultra balls for this, gold star Rayquaza, PSA 8, it turned out to be. Um, at the time, gold Ultra Ball, gold Ultra Balls were going for like 75 bucks a piece. So I paid like, I gave him basically $300 in trades for this. But uh, it turned out to be a PSA 8, which made it worth more. The trade is still in my favor, but I feel better about it because I wasn't the guy that said, yeah, I'll trade you one Ultra Ball for it. I couldn't do that to this kid. So to this day, I feel good about that because at least I know that I gave him much more value uh, and try to make it as close as I could, but he just wanted the one Ultra Ball. But here we are, Gold Star, Rayquaza, PSA 8. PSA 9, Mewtwo, EX Holland Phantoms, Mewtwo Gold Star, super cool looking card. By the way, love this card. I don't remember even how I came across it, because it was so long ago. I think I, I think I bought it, actually, when I had the uh, available availability to do so. <clears throat> Same thing with this Pikachu, PSA 9. Had this one graded myself as well. Very, very cool card. Pikachu Gold Star is, uh, it's another one of those really hard ones to find. A Holland Phantoms, another set that's just tough. Tough to get good Gold Stars from. <clears throat> Next up, we've got Mew Gold Star PSA 9 from EX Dragon Frontiers. It is one of the more valuable Gold Stars because it's Mew and Mew looks awesome. Don't worry, this is just tape here. It's taped uh, over from the, uh, from the plastic. Uh, it's taped onto the plastic that's surrounding this. It's in a little bit of a protective case and also a plastic wrapper. Uh, yeah, awesome card. PSA 9 Mew. Next up. Whew, man. This is where it gets real, guys. The two most sentimental cards that I own in my collection and two of the most valuable cards in my entire collection. Like I said, times come down to it, times, times come down to it. So, the next one, you guys saw me pull this card too. It was in a two-pack Tuesday, second to the last one we ever pulled. EX Team Rocket Returns. Man, it was the most MLG moment on the channel, thanks to my buddy Spectre who edited that in for us, but... Mudkip Gold Star, PSA 9. EX Team Rocket Returns. This was probably the most exciting moment in my entire career of opening Pokemon cards on YouTube. We pulled this out of a single pack of Team Rocket Returns, sold to us by Jeff from the PokeCapital.com, now the game capital. 
Insanity. Insanity. I don't know how this didn't get a 10, but it didn't. That's okay. Sometimes cards come out of a pack and they're not in perfect condition. This is one of those cases. Such a great memory, though. Such a great memory. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That's for sure. But if it's got to go, it's got to go. Last but not least, the most valuable card in my entire Pokemon card collection. I traded the same guy who gave me the Latias Gold Star for this next card. And I will tell you right now, in no way, shape, or form would I ever take less than $1,100 for this card. No way, shape, or form would I ever, 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 ever take less than $1,100 for this card. You might think I'm insane. What Pokemon card could possibly be worth $1,100 or more? Well, there's only two cards that are pretty much impossible to get a hold of because you can't pull them out of regular packs. One of them is Umbreon Gold Star. The other is Espeon. This is a PSA 9 from Pop Series 5. There are not many of these out there. There are even fewer that are in the condition that this one is in. The last time I checked, this card was worth a minimum of $1,100. I don't think I would even take $1,100. I think I would be taking $12 or more. I don't know if I can even do $11. I'd think about it at $11. But Espeon Gold Star, beautiful, just beautiful card. <coughs> For those of you who are unfamiliar to uh, the Espeon and Umbreon Gold Stars, they are the only non-hollow Gold Stars out there, which means they cannot be weighed for in packs. They weigh the same as a regular card. So there's no way to even weigh a pack and know that you have this. So if you find PSA or PSA, if you find Pop Series 5 packs, you can guarantee that you have a shot. You have a good shot of still pulling these, but they're getting harder and harder to find and the packs themselves are going for $100 to $200 a piece and you only get two cards in a pack. So insanity for sure. So you either hit it big or you miss it big. And we tried a couple times to hit it big and we failed. We got 40 of those and missed every single one of them. But uh, Pop Series 5, Espeon Gold Star, PSA 9, minimum 1100. I'm thinking probably closer to 12. Uh, but that gives you an idea of what kind of money it would take for me to get rid of this card. So there you go, guys. That's everything. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. Obviously, there's a lot of money here on the table, which could help us get to our point where we're able to put a bigger down payment on the house and be able to be into a house that actually works for us. Um, it's been a long time since I first met you guys in 2014, where we went from being just this couple of guys who, you know, were part of a family of a four at the time. Lucas wasn't even born yet. We were just having a good time and trying to get over some, some stuff in life and more stuff happened in life and more stuff happened in life and more stuff happened in life and we end up with a half destroyed house. We had a hurricane come through that we thought was going to wipe out our house. We've had drain field issues. We've had we've had a lot. We've been through a lot, guys. We really have. As a family, you guys have seen us go through it. I've been very public about everything. I'm not ashamed of our struggles, you know, it helped us get to where we're at. And we're finally at a point where we're finally about to be able to say, hey, we're okay. We're close. We're close to saying, hey, we're going to be okay. We're going to be in a normal house and have a normal life and be okay. But this, I think, will help push us to that point. So all the stuff's for sale, guys. It's on your, it's on your hands here from here. <coughs> all the uh, contact information, it's down below. It's in the description. Um, whether you contact me on Twitter, Instagram, or uh, email, or even Facebook, Pokemon Evolutionaries Facebook, uh, you can contact me there as well. Like I said, I I'm willing to work with people on this. Um, a lot of it is very close to me. It's very personal to me. I'm not looking to give things away because it. This is this is what means the most to me. Everything here. This is what I cherish the most. This is the stuff I've held on to the longest. And it's the stuff that's going to be worth who knows how much in the future. I would have preferred to hold on to it, but it's time. Got to do what's right. Got to do what's right for the family. So anyways, guys, thanks for listening to me ramble. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested in some of the cards. If you are, feel free to contact me and uh, yeah, we'll talk it out. So thanks a lot, guys. You're awesome. We love you. We appreciate you. And uh, thanks for getting us this far. See you next time.